Hi guys, welcome back. This is part one of the original Little Bigfoot series. If you missed the introduction, it's going to give you uh, all the details about how to make these guys and where you're going to get the patterns for each of them. And this is just a small sample of what's available in this entire series. So every animal that you see, and even the ones you don't see, all have the same head and body. So that's what we're doing in this video. We're going to start at the top of the head and we're going to work our way down to the bottom of row 10. And this is where we install the eyes as well. So this is part one, the head of the Little Bigfoot series, starting at row one, ending at row ten, and then we'll go on to part two. And remember, there is a written pattern for all of these guys, and that link is in the description box below, and there is a playlist for this video series, and it should be popping up on your screen right about now. So this video series is following the order of the written pattern, so if you don't need help with the crocheted rows, then just refer to the written pattern. If you want to see how we install the eyes, then fast forward this video to the very end, and that's where we install the eyes. If you want to crochet along with me, then grab your crochet hook and let's get started. Alright, we're going to get started with row one, and this is at the top of the head. And this is part one, row one, so I'm going to go very slowly over the first few rows and then we'll pick things up a little bit faster. Okay, I'm going to show you how to get a loop with six stitches. This is only one method. There's other methods out there. So if this one doesn't work for you, don't give up. Just give a search on YouTube for a loop with six stitches in crochet. But I'll show you my favorite method. Like I said, I'm going to take the shorter yarn tail. I'm going to wrap it around these two fingers twice. One, two. I'm going to hold that tail in between my pinky and my thumb. And now I'll hold the working yarn in between my pinky and my thumb. The first thing we have to do is make a slip knot. I'm going to go through those rings and go to the back. I'm going to grab this yarn and pull it through these two rings. Now I have a loop on my hook. Now I'm going to grab the yarn again and pull it through that loop. And we've made our slip knot. Now we can take it off our fingers and get ready to crochet on. Now I'm making six single crochets into this ring. Every time I go through, I'm going to go through both rings go to the back, grab the yarn, and pull it through the rings. And I'm going to do that six times. So going through the rings, going to the back, grab the yarn, pull it through the two rings. Now you have two loops on your hook. Grab the yarn again and pull it through those two loops. And we've just made one single crochet. We're going to do that five more times. And remember this is a watch me tutorial, so watch what I'm doing and then pause the video and try it yourself. Going through the rings, grab the yarn, pull it through, you have two loops, yarn over, pull through those two loops. And there was two. Going through the rings, and there was three. Four. Five. And last one, six. Now we have six single crochets in the ring. I'm going to pull up my last stitch so I don't lose it. And we can count those stitches. We made single crochets, now they're called stitches on this ring. And there'll be six stitches. You look for the V, there's two loops in each stitch. And it looks like a V. We count one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now we need to close up this ring. See my starting yarn tail there is in between those loops. I'll just pull it out, get it out of the way. I'll hold that slip knot that we made first between my finger and my thumb. And now I'm going to pull up one of these strings to close up this ring. That one didn't work, so it's the next one. And I'm pulling up from my finger and my thumb. Give it a little wiggle. Now we need to get rid of this loop, so we'll pull on the yarn tail. And we just finished row one, and that is a loop with six stitches. So the last stitch of the next row will be underneath this big loop. You can see the V. That's the last one. And the first one is in front of this starting yarn tail, and you can see the V. When you go through the stitches, make sure you're going through both loops of the stitches each time you go through. Very easy to pick up one, so make sure you have both loops of those stitches on your hook every time you go through. 
All right, so we're ready for row two. We're gonna put two single crochets in each one of those six stitches all the way around. So let's do this row together. Two single crochets into the first stitch, push your hook through, grab your yarn and pull it through. Yarn over and pull through. And there was one single crochet. Now we're gonna go back in the same stitch we were just in and put another one. And there was two single crochets in the first. Now we're going to go into the second stitch of the row. Put our single crochet. Go back in the same stitch. And there's our second single crochet. So that was two single crochets in the second stitch. Now we're going to go into the third one. One single crochet, going back in and two single crochets into the fourth one single crochet and back in two single crochets into the fifth one now and back in and there's two and now last one of the row, one and two. We finished row two and now we have 12 stitches around. You can see I didn't cut my starting yarn tail. Do not cut that short. If you do cut it short it could eventually work free and you get a hole in your stuffy. So just leave it hanging. In the next couple of videos I'm going to show you how to hide that away but we'll leave it hanging for this uh, video. And if your middle circle there has a big gap in it, you can actually close it up by pulling on this starting yarn tail. Just grab onto it and then pull the starting yarn tail. All right, we're ready to move on to row three, but we need to add a marker. Now I'm gonna use a piece of yarn of a different color. So I'm gonna go through the last stitch I just put in. I'm gonna grab my yarn marker and I'm going to pull one strand through and leave the other one hanging. And I'm going to move this marker at the end of every row. So just keep in mind that this yarn marker, because it is just sitting in there without anything holding it in place, it can be pulled out along the way. So just keep that in mind. Uh, you might want to find a stitch marker that stays put where you put it. So moving on to row three, one single crochet in the first, two single crochets in the second, and then we repeat that all the way around till we land on the marker. When you land on the marker, you should be putting in two single crochets. So I'm going to do the first couple sets with you and then I'll leave you on your own. One single crochet in the first. There's one. And now two single crochets into the second. One back in and two. And now we're going to repeat that. One single crochet in the first. And two single crochets into the second. There's one. And back in. And two. And now you just keep repeating that sequence all the way around. One, two, one, two. And when you land on the marker, like I said, you should be putting in two single crochets. So I'll continue on with the pattern. I'll meet you back here when we're ready to land on the marker and I'll show you what that looks like. So I'm coming to the last time that I can do one, two, one single crochet in the first, and then two is gonna land on that marker. So I'm gonna pull it out and put in my two single crochets. And we just finished row three and now we have 18 stitches around. We're gonna move that marker Get ready to crochet on. The so row four, I'm going to do the entire row with you. We're going to put one single crochet in the next three stitches. One. Two. And three. And now two single crochets in the next two stitches.
And now two single crochets into the second. One and two. And now one single crochet in the next seven stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And now two single crochets in the next two stitches. One single crochet and then back in. And there's two. Now repeat that. One single crochet in the next. And back in and there's two. And now one single crochet in the next four stitches. One, two, three, and the fourth will land on the marker so I'll pull it out and four. And we're done row four and now we have 22 stitches around. And you can see the piece is starting to fold up on itself so just make sure that you turn it right side. So this is the right side and that is the wrong side. We're going to move our marker. I'll do row five with you as well. So one single crochet in the next four stitches. One, two, three, and four. And now two single crochets into the next. One and two. And now one single crochet in the next ten stitches. You can pause the video because I'm going to speed this up. One single crochet in the next ten stitches. And ten. Two single crochets into the next. And now one single crochet in the remaining six stitches. The sixth one will land on that marker, so you should be putting in one single crochet. You can pause the video, I'm going to speed it up. And now we're finished row five, and now we have 24 stitches around. We're going to move our marker. So we just finished row five, so I'm going to show you how to count rows. We should have five rings. We're going to start here, we're going to count behind the marker always. Starting with row one, one, two, three, four, and five. We're at the end of row five. Row six through ten is one single crochet in each one of those 24 stitches for five rows. So if you don't want to keep track, just put a little notepad beside you. Each time you move this marker, put a notch on your notepad. When you have five notches, we'll meet back here. One single crochet in each one of those 24 stitches for five rows. Remember to move your marker at the end of every row, and I'll meet you back here at the end of row 10. Just came to the end of row 10. I've pulled up my last stitch so I don't lose it. Alright guys, now it's time to do safety eyes if you're using them. And each animal... Uh, varies a little bit. So you're going to look at the pattern that you're making and it's going to tell you which row the eyes go in between, which rows they go in between, and how many spaces are between them. And I'm going to show you that in just a minute. And actually this guy doesn't even have his eyes totally attached yet. I'm going to be doing yarn eyes in this one. And I'm going to show you at the end of this series, after we get the animal all stuffed and put together and the muzzle sewn on and everything, I'm going to show you how to to do yarn eyes. Very, very simple. So if you don't have uh, safety eyes, don't you worry about it. We're going to give them eyes at the very end. Okay, so like I said, you need to go see the written pattern of the animal that you're making and it will tell you where the eyes go. And remember, you can put them anywhere you want to, but you just have to keep in mind that you are going to be attaching a muzzle to most of these and you have to have room for the eyes. The majority on those guys that I just showed you were a 7 millimeter and an 8 millimeter. You can go uh, larger if you'd like to. It's all personal preference. Okay, so I'm using 7 millimeter and I have the ones with the middle back. They go in very easily with finger power. 
If you order some with the plastic backs, they're like a screw-on type, they, they need a special tool to install them. So just make sure that you know what you're ordering when you do order them. I do have the link on my blog for these guys here. Popping in with an edit after I had already finished filming, I realized I didn't add the little bit about felt behind the eyes. This guy here, his eyes were glued in after he was stuffed and closed. I do that a lot. I suggest that you play around with felt first. See how you like the look. You'll have to glue, if you want a little piece like this, you'll have to glue a little piece to the back of it, the eye itself. Let it dry and then put the backs on. Tacky glue works well and also like a fabric glue. Now the way I designed the heads, they have a more of a oval shape if you look on the top. When we increased rows 4 and 5, I gave it that shape. So the last stitch you just put out, turn that around and make that the center of the back. So that, that should be in the center in the back. So when you look at the top of the head, you can see where it's wider here. So that's the sides of the head. Okay, so do look at the written pattern. Whichever animal you are making, sometimes the row count differs. So the ones I'm doing are going to go in between the 6th and 7th row. But make sure that you look on your pattern to determine where your eyes are going. So I'm just going to count here on the top. There's row 1. I'm counting the rings. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So I know the eyes are going in between there. And there's going to be 4 stitch holes between them. So I'm going to put the first one... And then I'm going to count the stitch holes. One, two, three, four. And when you count the stitch holes in between them, one, two, three, four. So you'll be putting the eyes on either side. So there should be actually four stitch holes between the eyes. Now before you attach the backs, make sure that you have them exactly where you want them because once you get the backs on them, they won't come off. Okay, I actually lost a clip where I installed them on camera, but it's easy. If you have the middle back ones, you just push it on until they can't push any further and then you know they're attached. And if you have the plastic ones, then you'll need that special tool to attach them. Alright guys, we're going to end the video here because it's getting kind of long and we will start row 11 in part 2. So remember to move your marker and I'll meet you over there.